some time. Uh, we might even worship just a little bit, and we're going to be starting a new Bible study. Uh, believe we're going to head the direction. I have to Wednesday to figure it out, but I'm leaning towards a study on the armor of God and spiritual warfare uh, for a few weeks. And so I'm just kind of really wanting to move into some time to pray and seek the Lord and be together, lift one another up and just be in his presence. And so this Wednesday, we've been on a little summer, extended summer break, uh, but we're kicking off 6.30 Wednesday night. So lots of opportunities to connect. Home groups are back in action. And so we have opportunities in home groups. You know what? I, I love seeing, I don't love seeing people struggle, but I love seeing when people do struggle that one of the greatest systems of support in the local church is the home group, the small group, whether that's the men, the women, the Wednesday, or the groups that meet in homes, to see those groups rally around families and people when they struggle is amazing. So if for no other reason, that's the best way for you to get plugged in, to make friends, to have support, to get connected, for you to be able to have an outlet to serve and love others. And when you go through something, hopefully you don't, but if and when you do, you've got a group that knows your name, that can begin to pray for you, talk to you, call you, bring you some food, and uh, know what's going on with you. So uh, if you have questions, stop by our Welcome Center. And uh, we're working on a, uh, I'm not quite ready to launch, probably in, uh, probably not till the end of the month, but we're working on a class related to marriage on uh, Sunday evenings. Uh, I have a group already on the first and third, so we're looking at like the second and fourth Sunday uh, probably starting in November, but you can kind of think about that. We're working out some details of child care, and uh, I don't know, uh, everyone I know, whether you've been married three years, 30 years, or 50 years, can continue to invest and develop and build and work on that relationship, and, um, and I think it's one that's under extreme attack by the enemy in our nation, trying to undermine the family, and, and one worthy of all, rela- besides your relationship with Christ, uh, if you're married, a relationship with your spouse, I think, is one worthy of your efforts. So we'll get you information coming in a little bit on that. Well, hey, we've been in a series this fall, well, in a, in, a, uh, in a direction. I felt like the Lord gave me, and these aren't profound, they're not things I haven't preached on before, but they're things that I felt we should really lean into in this specific season of life. And one was praise. We spent about a month talking about praise, and because we finish that series doesn't mean we stop praising, right? The idea is we want to lean into praise. We want to be active participants in praise. We want in the church, out of the church, in the morning, all day long, be men and women, young men and women, older young, older men and women. We want to be people of praise because there's tremendous power. And we're going to be talking about the power of God coming up. And really, uh, we all know it, I think, as Pentecostals, you receive power But what we want to talk about is what's it really mean to walk in it and live in it. We're going to talk about prayer. We'll be exploring some of that on Wednesdays, but I'll also be doing some teaching on Sundays. Uh, Every Christian has uh, some ideas about prayer, but are you moving mountains? And we want to uh, work on actually seeing things happen in the spiritual realm. But for this season, for the month of October, we're talking about the prophetic. Prophetic. Everybody go, ooh, like that. You got to help me out. When I say prophetic, you say, ooh. There you go. All right. That's the last time you get to do that because that's the problem with the prophetic is we think it's all, ooh, <laughs> right? It's, it's this spiritual thing that happens in church, and, and there's that, those three people that do it, and, and it tends to be in church, and, and they say things, and, and it's really good, and the rest of us listen and, and, and are blessed. And that is not really God's idea for the prophetic. It is a idea for the prophetic. It is one of God's ideas for the prophetic. But I want you to listen to this scripture in Acts 2. This is just, I, I, you ever have a scripture just grab you and not let go of you? Uh, this has just grabbed me this fall. And, uh, and, and it says this, Acts 2.17, in the last days, which is when? Well, you know, when governments are struggling, wars and rumors of wars, uh, when there's economies that are upended, when there's plagues and and global pandemics, when there are natural disasters increasing at at rapid rates, when when there is uncertainty, when there's movements towards global economies, global religion and global government. Oh, wait, that's kind of in the news, right? So in 2021, you could read this. 
Now, today, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit in Brooklyn Abundant Life Assembly of God Church. Come on, we're all people, right? We're all people and it's the last days. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. That's me. Your old men will dream dreams. <laughs> even, on my, even on my servants, and that's really on the people that serve me. On the people that serve me, men and women. How many are serving the Lord? Men, women. It is good to make a distinction there, right? One or the other. Men, women, servants of the Lord, I will pour up my spirit in those days, and they, Mr. Miller, men and women who are serving the Lord, right? And they, he's my resident English specialist, so we have others, Miss Nikki, good stuff in, all you teachers, and they, I didn't see her, oh, she's like the language specialist. All right, I'm overwhelmed by English specialist, but I think I'm correct in saying they means the men and women that serve the Lord. They will prophesy. They will prophesy. So let's put this in, in a little paraphrase to the modern life. Today, in Brooklyn, God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all y'all and if you're a servant of the Lord, you should be prepared to prophesy. That's different, isn't it, than the three people that occasionally, when, when there's a really good moment in the service, they give a word. That's a good thing. I'm not down on that. But what I'm saying is God has more than that. In addition to that, there's an expression of the prophetic that is the gift of prophecy. That is what happens generally in a gathering when God wants to bring a word of encouragement and somebody will share that to the body. That's biblical. That's uh, completely wonderful. It is helpful. It is good. We like it when it happens. We want it to happen. It should happen more and it doesn't need to only be three people. Thank you. All right. But there is an office of the prophet in Ephesians, a path, right? Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. And the office of the prophet, the Bible says, is for the, the building up of the body of Christ. Okay? And then there's all of us who the Bible says should be anointed, filled, have the Spirit poured out upon us, and we should also be able to engage in this thing called prophecy. And what I want to do today unfortunately, and I don't know why, but I think there's this sense that it's, it's very mystical, very uh, super spiritual, and uh, very uncommon. But that's not what the text says, is it? It just says this should be the normal Christian life as is, is we eat and sleep and breathe and talk and sing and praise and, and prophesy. It's, it's how Christians operate. So what does that mean? To live and operate, to be open to the prophetic throughout your day. To prophesy simply means to speak God's message with clarity or to proclaim the word uh, God is bringing. To speak under the inspiration of Holy Spirit. So simply hearing an impression, a thought, a word, an idea from God, and speaking it. Prophecy is verbal, right? Hearing it is good. If it's for you and God just speaks to you, it's wonderful. That's not prophetic. That's just God encouraging you, whispering to your spirit, confirming a direction, talking to you. God can do that all day long. It's wonderful. But when you hear that, that inspiration, that thought, it could be a singular word. It could just be a thought or an idea, or it could be a sentence or a paragraph. But hearing that from God and saying it... That's prophetic. So the same expression of, hey, you look nice today, could just be me, which is not a bad thing to do, right? That's called encouragement. <laughs> to say, hey, you look nice today is a wonderful thing to say. But it's also, when the, if the Holy Spirit just prompts me to give you that word of encouragement, that becomes prophetic. In other words, it was God wanting to say it to you. 
and I was able to be his voice box. Does that make sense? Both are helpful, but we're going to look today at what the prophetic can do supernaturally. 1 Corinthians 14.3 says, Everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. Strengthening, encourage. How many like to be strengthened? Encouraged? Comforted? How many would say in your lifetime, in your whole lifetime, since you are born until today, you've had somebody at least once give you a word, a specific word, maybe a single word, or just a sentence or a, a, an affirmation that really encouraged you, strengthened you, or helped you? That's a good thing, right? We want to have that happening more often, inspired by Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to give you a few things because I want to really lay a foundation so we understand that, uh, especially today, in the last days, that the prophetic ministry, if you want to call it that, I don't even know, like calling it a ministry because it makes it, ooh, <laughs> right? But being used by God to give a word to somebody to strengthen, encourage, and build up is for everybody. One, let me just give you a few things here. These aren't really in your notes. You can jot down if you want. The prophetic doesn't have to be weird. What's weird? Weird just means different, right? And so we, have, we live in, in the Midwest uh, of the United States of America. We might operate, uh, we have a language, right? If, if we go to Poland, where the McLeans are missionaries, they have a, a, a language and a culture that's different. But we, it, it, when we have a conversation, when I go into the, to the cafe and, and we're having some coffee, we can converse. There's kind of a similarity to how we talk, right? Now, if you go to other parts of even America, you go to the, the Boston, you go down to Alabama, Louisiana, you go to Texas, you go to California, you, there's, it's all English, but there's just some different dialects, right? But we have a, we have a, we have a normal, and then we have... You kind of, your ears perk up when you're like, oh, you're an East Coaster. Oh, you got a strong accent. Where are you from? Oh, you're from Latin America, right? And so it's okay if a prophetic is different. But what I want you to understand is sometimes we get this idea that it has to be loud, it has to be spiritual sounding. You get a little vibrato. The Lord God spoketh unto me. If you do that, it's okay, but it's a little weird, and it makes everybody like, hmm. Okay? It's okay, though. It's not sinful. But I just want you to know it doesn't have to be like that. Matter of fact, God can probably use that word a little more effectively if it's received as normal conversation. Does that make sense? So you're not wrong if you use, you know, kind of louder, more formal language. You're not sinning. But what I want you to know is it's can very much be normal conversation, okay? Prophetic doesn't have to be announced. In other words, you don't have to say, hey, got a prophetic word. Shh. Now, it, it can, you know, it doesn't have to be, thus saith the Lord God of hosts. It can. It can. Not wrong, but it doesn't have to be. Okay? Matter of fact, I would be a little careful of that. Because if you start your prophetic word with, thus saith the Lord, or I have a word from the Lord for you, then you better have a word from the Lord for them. Okay? So I'm going to talk a little bit later in the message today, but I think it's quite okay to have a little more casual approach to understand that I'm a human being working on this stuff, wanting to be open to God, and I think it's quite acceptable to say, Hey, I just, I'm a Christian, and I think I got this thought when I was praying about you, and could I share it with you, and you pray about it, and I think maybe it's from God. That might sound a little wimpy, but isn't it okay to be working on stuff and figuring it out and trying? Instead of, here's the, here's the alternative. I'm not 100% sure that I could say, thus saith the Lord, therefore I say nothing. And that's what the body of Christ does. It says nothing. Because I'm at 90%, but I, I don't say thus saith the Lord when I'm at 90%. I don't say thus saith the Lord when I'm at 98%. You all with me? All right. So, 
It doesn't have to be announced. It doesn't have to be spoken in King James English. Jesus did not speak King James English. He spoke, right? He was Jewish. He spoke some Hebrew, some Aramaic, some Greek. Uh, if you give a word in King James English, God loves you. You're not sinning, but it, it's not our normal dialect. You don't really have to do that to be spiritual sounding. The prophetic doesn't have to be profound. I think we have this thought like, unless I'm talking about Jesus coming back or some radical change in your life or you need to you know, drop your job or marry this person or sell your house. And, and so I just get this word like, hey, God sees you today. Well, that's pretty simple. Yep. I think that's where most prophetic words is. It's just what we need to hear in that moment. It does not have to be. It could be a singular word. It could be a sentence. It could just be a word of encouragement. And it could be dramatically profound but it doesn't have to be. Uh, they don't have to be long, and they don't have to be public. In other words, there's an expression of the prophetic to the, to the body or to a, to a home group, but it can be you call your friend. Hey, I was thinking about you, and I had this thought. It could be a text message. It could be one-on-one -on -one over coffee. Okay? It should be normal for us to have a thought, idea, or word from the Lord for somebody that we that we see. If you're in a body, there are some higher expectations. In a group, you should be accountable to the pastor, to the church, and, and certainly doing your best to discern, this is God inspiring me to bring a message to this body, right? There's, there's, we weigh it and test it. We'll get to that in weeks to come. Now, here's the question. Do we really need prophecy? Because don't we as Christians have the ability to seek God and hear His voice all by ourselves? So if prophecy is God speaking and you saying what God said, can't I just cut the middleman and get to God myself? It's okay to smile in church. It's Sunday. We've had coffee. It's good. Maybe that's deep in thought. I would say that I just like to mess with you is what I like to do. Make you think a little bit. But I... Technically, theoretically, we probably don't need prophecy because we really do have the ability to seek God and hear His voice for every decision and every circumstance. We can draw from God and inspiration and courage and confidence and joy. And So here's the deal. When we need to hear from God the most is usually what? When we're tired, when we're stressed, when it's a huge decision, when it's emotionally charged, when there's major consequences, and it's in those times where it gets a little harder. How many of you, the day you got saved, you were really good at hearing the voice of God, discerning it, and knowing what to do in every circumstance? How about before you got saved? How about 20 years after you got saved? You are a master, ninja, hearer of the Word. So God knowing us, yes, we technically can go to God and we should go to God. And here's how it works. God will speak to you, but then God uses the prophetic not to direct you, but to confirm and to encourage, to strengthen and to build up. So you've been kind of sensing in your heart, maybe I should change jobs. And then somebody says, I just got this weird thought that just to tell you that change is coming. I don't know if that means anything to you. Oh yeah, I've been thinking about it. You know, And so it's a confirmation, not a direction. Don't go quit your job just because somebody told you to, right? But it confirms, it builds up. What's it do? With a prophetic encourages, strengthens, and comforts. Sometimes I'm just struggling to get clarity. And that word from a friend or two can help build my my clarity and my confidence right it builds me up it strengthens me it comforts me sometimes i'm there's not a christian or sometimes look we've had times where we're just worn out or we're just sad or we're just grieving or we're just mad or we're just frustrated and we're just having a hard time getting a hold of getting that word from god and it's in those moments where the body of christ can come and say hey man i just had this thought about you and build one another up so do we need it i say yes <laughs> Because we're human beings. And God designed uh, the body of Christ to operate with this wonderful expression of the Holy Spirit called prophecy. So Isaiah 50 and verse 4 is our text today. It's really simple. If you, don't like, if you like really deep, profound, remember I told you the prophetic doesn't need to profound? So I'm going to give you a very simple sermon today. Um, because 
I am just convinced that this expression of the prophetic is intended to be fairly simple. Not insignificant, hugely significant, transformational, monstrous, but relatively simple to operate in. Okay? You ready? Isaiah 50 in verse 4. The Lord, the sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue. Some would say the tongue of a disciple. An instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to hear, to listen like one being taught. An instructed tongue, the tongue of a disciple, to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. I'm calling this practical prophecy. Practical prophecy. All right, why don't you say this, say this with me? Say, I can do it. That's you. Say, Pastor, that's a little freaking me out right now. This is just weird. It's a little, I got, let's leave it for, you know, well, hang with me. All right? Write this down. The right word. The Lord has given me an instructed tongue. In other words, He's given me the word to say. The word came from the Lord. Now, that sounds a little tough all by itself, doesn't it? I'm supposed to like hear from God this word. Yes. But it's not that complicated. I'm going to make a, an educated guess here that probably almost all of you at some point in your Christian life have actually given somebody a prophetic word and didn't even know it. Because you got an impression, a thought, an idea that came from the Holy Spirit, not even really knowing it, and then you went to that person and just said it because it was on your mind. That's the prophetic. When the word came from the Lord, you have given me the instructed tongue, the word that sustained the weary. And so I think we accidentally give prophetic words all the time. What I want to inspire you to is let's, in addition to the accidents, let's start doing it on purpose. But it's the same process. When I see somebody and the thought comes to my mind, oh, they look down, they could use a word of encouragement. Well, where did that come from? Are you really that nice? No. Nikki Solomon is that nice, but most of you are not. Right? Some of you are pretty nice. But come on, and it could be, it could be just you. Right? It really could be. So what would happen if it actually was not the Holy Spirit, but it was just you who saw somebody in your intellect, you decided they looked down and could use a word of encouragement, and you went and said, hey, you look great today. I like the hair. I like the outfit. It just works for you. You look awesome. But you just blew it, didn't you? No, you just encouraged them. It may not have been, quote, prophetic, but, but it was wonderful. Encouragement is an, also a wonderful thing to do. Encourage one another is a biblical theme. So it's nothing, no loss. It was good. It was wonderful. But what if that was Holy Spirit? Let's just rule out the devil because he doesn't want you to encourage anybody. Right? If it's something nice and building up and affirming and helpful, if it's what were our three things? Encouraging, strengthening, and comforting. That's not the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? So if some nice thought comes, or some inspirational thought, or some motivational thought, or some helpful thought, or just some kind word, it's either me, or it's God. And either one's a win. Now, as you practice a little bit, you begin to kind of sense, oh, that was Holy Spirit, right? So with some practice, you begin to find out, oh, that, that's what that feels like, that little nudge, that little, that little thought, that little impression, that little... Uh, it's really kind of Holy Spirit putting that in my mind. But you're not going to lose. But I'd be careful saying, thus saith the Lord of hosts, you look nice today. Unless, you know, you kind of got some confirmation. But most of the time, I don't think we give enough credit to the Holy Spirit for those great thoughts that pop in our mind. And sometimes, I'm just going to warn you, if you want to go to, uh, from level 1 to level 2, Sometimes, it might not make sense to you, 
right? It might make a lot of sense for you to say, hey, you're, you're a good mom. I just want to encourage you. It might make sense to say, hey, God loves you. It might make sense to say, you look nice today. It might make sense to say, hey, God's got your back. It might not make sense to say, I just saw this thought about like a dog. I just saw you and thought about a dog. I don't know if that means anything to you. And it's weird. Right? Man, when I saw you today, I, I, I saw a flat tire. I don't know. But God's got, God, God's got your tires. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to be, are you willing to just act on that thought that comes to your mind that needs to encourage that person? It could be a sentence, it could be a phrase. But the key is the right word. That God has given me an instructed tongue, the tongue of a disciple, to bring a word in season to sustain the word. Am I willing to listen and make an attempt? See, I think we so underestimate the power of words, and yet. The Bible says life and death are in our tongue. Proverbs 18.21. Life and death. You can change someone's life or you can hurt somebody. Right? Our words, some, see, here's where we go too often is because we've had a little bit of life, we've had a little bit of experience, we move right into giving some, some uh, what do you want to call it, our own wisdom, maybe criticism, Maybe uh, my life experience, right? We see somebody that's sick, and what's the fr- everybody that's sick could acknowledge. Everybody that's ever done this, you know. What's everybody say? Oh, you need to take some vitamin C. Oh, you need vitamin D. Oh, you need some garlic. Oh, you need acupuncture. Oh, you need, you need a massage from Tammy is what you need. That'll set you straight. Everybody's got an experience, right? Not bad. I don't mind saying those things, but you know what will change my life? A word from God. And we tend to go right to what I saw on Dr. Phil and what I read on, market, you know, on Facebook and Instagram. And I just saw this article and oh, if you put lemon juice in it and you know, stand on your head and drink apple cider vinegar. Maybe, but what we need even more than that is one word from God. Sometimes we say hurtful words. I remember when... Uh, Oh, well, this happens in church all the time. Sometimes we just say without thinking things that are hurtful. We think, I don't know if we think we're being funny or we just don't care. Or sometimes we, have, we feel like it's authentic to speak without a filter. You know, but, oh, that, that's, that, that's quite the hairdo there. Oh, pastor, put on a few pounds. Thank you. I looked in the mirror today. God bless you. I remember when uh, Melissa was pregnant, I think this happened with all four of them, it's just people are insensitive, go to church, nice Christian people, and people, this was happening all the time. Oh my goodness, you are huge! Huge! Well, I mean, she was, but no woman I've ever met wants to hear that. That was not strengthening, encouraging, or comforting, come on. And by the way, just in case you didn't know, this has not, never been my case, but there are people who, who are genetically very thin, and they hate it too. Oh, you're so skinny all the time, so skinny. Why don't you go eat some ice cream, right? And people don't really need that, want that. That's not encouraging, strengthening, and building up. So our words, we tend to just go to our reaction, our observation. We, we like to give our own um, prescription of how to cure all that ails you, and what I could suggest is not that your experience is bad, but what if we started conversations by saying, Holy Spirit, what, what are you saying here? What if before I shared my opinions and my observations, I just took a moment to say, Holy Spirit, you got anything to, to help here? Because a word inspired by the Holy Spirit is transformational. Your vitamins might work. I'm not saying they don't. I take vitamins. I, believe, I drink apple cider. I like all that stuff, right? But life and death is not in a vitamin. That's not in the Bible, right? Life and death is not in any one little thing you can drink, right? Life and death is not even in the power nap, although they're awesome. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. You can help somebody with a little good advice. You can see somebody's life transformed with a word from God. And you can do that. 
You say, Pastor, I'm barely even saved. I don't even know if I'm saved. I'm kind of half saved. I'm thinking about being saved. If you know Jesus as Lord and Savior for one minute, the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you. The power of the Holy Spirit is upon you, and you can hear the voice of God and share it with somebody. That's you. I think so often we, we bypass the supernatural power of a word from God. Whether we're ministering to a, a teenager and we just want to tell them, you just you know, change your clothes, kid, comb your hair, what's up with all the holes in your head, what's going on, like that dude's a dork, everybody knows the dude's a dork, why can't you see that the dude, you know, and I just got to tell you from my experience, most teenagers really don't want to hear your opinion. But what if the Holy Spirit just gave you a way to share a simple word that might not be what you wanted to say, and that might be what you think would change them, but it's exactly what they needed to hear. Because the problem is nothing to do with the dork they're dating. The problem has to do with their personal life and a grief they're having or a parent problem or something their grandfather did, right? And then one word from the Lord could change their life where your opinion could just make them mad. How many times have we seen a, maybe a parent struggling with a kid who's crazy acting and you're like oh, if they would just spank that kid or give them a little discipline a little order in their household you had a spine there mom maybe that's all true and maybe there's all kinds of stuff going on that you don't know about and probably you telling them take your kid home and give them some discipline is probably not going to change their life but maybe the lord knows exactly what they're, str they're struggling with as a parent and could give you just some, a word of encouragement for them that's going to change their life and help them be a better parent. We're quick to jump to our own conclusion, our own thoughts, and our own prescriptions. And if we would slow down and say, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say here? You don't even have to be so spiritual. Just slow down for a minute and give God a chance to give you some thoughts that come from Him. The Lord has given me. He wakens me morning by morning. And I just want to give you this thought. You're welcome to disagree with me. Um, but I think, I believe, obviously, I think prophecy is when from God is, is true and right and helpful and accurate. But I believe we've set such a standard of perfection, right, that the Internet's blown up these days with, you know, somebody gave a prophetic word and hasn't happened yet. And then they need to be removed from ministry and shot down and publicly humiliated. Come on. That's how the body of Christ crucifies the people that try to be used by God. And if we would take a deep breath. Now listen, part of that's in the problem of the delivery. If that person says, the Lord has spoken to me, thus saith the Lord, they have put themselves on that platform of perfection. So yeah, we need to hold them accountable. But the prophetic amongst the believers, the body of Christ, can be a little more relaxed. We want to hear from God. We want to be accurate. But if we wait for 100% confidence, you probably won't ever say a thing. And what if I was 51% sure this was God? I'm quite confident it's not the devil, and I think it's going to be helpful regardless. So instead of saying, thus saith the Lord, what if I was willing to say, hey, you know what, Jen? I saw you and I was just thinking just to tell you God sees you and he knows you and he's been, he's been listening right you didn't think he was listening you've been mad at him but he's listening I don't know pray about it what if I not to be wishy-washy but I, instead of putting myself on a standard of perfection just saying hey I'm a Christian I have the Holy Spirit I, 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 I think this is from God but I, would, you, would you be willing to pray about it that, you know that gives us the space to say Maybe it was me. Maybe, maybe it was just not for you. Maybe, I, maybe it was tacos I ate last night, and I'm sorry. But what if we were willing to step out and just accept a little bit of imperfection and the chance that somebody's life could be changed? There is a place. I'm not opposed to saying God has spoken. There's a place for that, for sure. But I don't think we always have to engage in prophetic in that way. I think as the body of Christ, just loving each other, we can say, hey, I was thinking about you in prayer today and this popped in my head. That's most likely a prophetic word. 
Why don't you pray about it? The right word, the right timing. The Lord has given me the right word in season to sustain the weary. A word in season to sustain the weary. In other words, there's that, that phrase in season means God's timing. In the right timing. Now, most of the time, that's going to be immediately. But we need to be sensitive because there's a right time. Like, right after the game, right, when you've just made a bad play, is not the time you want to hear about it. Right after the sermon is not one you, you want to hear, like, oh, you look dumb, your fly was down, right? <laughs> it's not, you don't want to hear that. Right after church is not when you want to hear, oh, the audio didn't even work online, nobody heard your sermon, right? Right? That there's a timing, like, give it 24 hours so I'm ready to, in a mindset to process some constructive criticism, right? When somebody's mad, when somebody's sad, when somebody's shocked, when somebody's in crisis, we just need to be sensitive to there's a timing. But I, most of the time, when God prompts you, it's for them. Most of the time. That's also the God time. In other words, yesterday that wouldn't have helped, and tomorrow's probably too late. But most of the time, that moment when God gives you that thought is the moment you need to make the phone call, you need to send the text, you need to uh, go talk to that person after church. And you might be thinking, well, I need to pray on it some more. I'm not sure. It's okay to be not sure. As long as you don't tell them you're sure. God's timing. A word in season. I remember, uh, well, it's been a few years ago, but I'm going to guess this has happened to some of you, but Melissa and I were at a conference and she was praying about some uh, Andrew Walmack uh, out in Colorado and we were, she was praying about, she had three specific things. She was just asking the Lord about it like during worship time. End of the service, this, this guy uh, wasn't the pastor, the preacher, just an altar helper just came up and said, hey, I just felt this in my heart for you and da, 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 da. one, two, three, the three things she asked about, gave her an answer for <laughs> Well, that wouldn't have helped the day before. But then that moment, she just prayed and it was like, oh, wow. Could she have got that from God, a direct download? Yes. But she was asking the Lord and the Lord sent somebody and in that moment, it was very encouraging to know, hey, God's listening to me. Right? And you don't know when you see that person in line or you see them at the gas station or just in the foyer here in church or one of your kids tomorrow morning, your spouse, you don't know what they're thinking and struggling with and processing and that word to you just seems simple, normal. But it might be what they need in season, that, mo- that timely word that helps them. Bless you. And thirdly, the right person. A word in season to sustain the weary. The word is for somebody. And most of the time it's obvious, right? Most of the time it's obvious. But just understand, God has a divine appointment. He dropped that thought in your heart to share with that specific person in this specific moment. A targeted word, a divine appointment. To him who is weary. I think of uh, Gideon in the Old Testament where he's it's in the book of Judges, he's hiding out in this wine press. He's scared. There's enemies around them. They're outnumbered. And this angel shows up with really what I'd call a prophetic word and says, hey, God is with you, mighty warrior. What is that? That's a word of encouragement and strength and comfort. Like, I'm feeling like a sissy. The, the angel didn't show up and say, hey, you big sissy, get out there and do something. That would make him feel bad. <laughs> he said, hey, mighty warrior, God's with you. And it built him up. He began to see with God's eyes. He began to know God was with him. And he, and he followed through on it. And God used him. I think of uh, the Apostle Paul. Remember him? He wrote a lot of the New Testament. In the Acts 7, he was Saul, the persecutor of the church. He's walking down the Damascus Road. God, Jesus shows up to him in this flashing light. He's blinded. And uh, he ends up sitting at this house blind. And God speaks to a guy named Ananias and says, Hey, would you go uh, talk to Saul and, uh, and lay hands on him? He's going to be healed. He's going to be filled with the Spirit. And the guy says, no way. <laughs> he kills people. <laughs> and God said to Ananias, he said, no, I need you to do this. It's going to be good. I'm paraphrasing. 
So he did. Specific message for a specific guy. He had to walk to his house, lay hand, the Lord Jesus heals you, and boom, his scales fall off his eyes. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He launches out into this great ministry because Ananias was willing to deliver a specific word to a specific guy at a specific time. The Apostle Paul had many opportunities, but later in Acts chapter 10, there's this guy named Cornelius, right, a Roman, and, and he's having questions about the Holy Spirit, and, and God begins to show the Apostle Paul, he has that crazy dream about all the unclean animals coming down, and, and then Cornelius' servants come and get him, and Paul comes and says, oh, God has shown me. He loves you, the Gentiles, and the Holy Spirit is for you, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a specific word for specific people at a specific time that changed their life. And you say, well, that's Paul. That's the Apostle Paul. And in the last days, I will pour out my Spirit on all people, and they will prophesy. That's you. The right word, you can write this at the bottom of your notes, the right word at the right time given to the right person will produce the right results to sustain the weary, to strengthen, to encourage The English ESV Bible said to sustain the weary with a word. The the NCV says to make the weak strong. New Living says to comfort the weary. Young's Living says to aid the weary. Message Bible says encourage tired people. God will give you a word in season to sustain, to strengthen, to aid, assist, encourage, help those that are needing it. Who is God wanting to use? All people. All believers. Right? Men servants and maid servants. On to them, and they will prophesy. What if this week, what if this week, God would use you to speak to one person? I think He could use you to speak to 20 people. What if, what if you just got it in my mind that's not just for church and it's not just for you all got your little list like of the spiritual people at Abundant Life, right? You might be surprised to know all about them. I could tell you stories. But you got people who you think are pretty spiritual, right? And then you're like, well, then, then there's me. <laughs> and sometimes God can use um, somebody less experienced, easier than somebody more experienced because you're just humble and open and willing. God can use a kid. God can use a child. God can use a senior citizen and everything in between. What if this week we were open not just to accidental prophecies, I think they happen, but what if I was open to, well, Pastor, I'm not, that, I'm not really like the spiritual type. I mean, I'm a Christian, but, you know, it's awkward. You don't have to make it sound it with trumpets, right? What if we could grow comfortable just saying, you know what, I was thinking about you and this came to my mind. I'm a Christian. Maybe it's from God. Why don't you pray about it? How hard is that? So I want to pray for us this morning. I want to, in a minute, we're going to sing and just take some time in the Lord's presence. And I like to allow, I call it to marinate. I like to allow a little time because I know you're thinking about lunch and what you're going to do this afternoon. And, and I finished early, so you just have to sit and relax and let the Holy Spirit soak the word into your spirit. Maybe this morning, maybe you're operating in this all the time and you're like, okay, pastor, piece of cake. And maybe you're like, no, that scares the tar out of me, pastor. I don't care what you say. (laughs) And maybe you're anxious or nervous or maybe you're like, that all sounds good, but that whole hearing from God thing, like, you know, I know people do it, but I am not quite there yet. I think you probably are, you just don't know it. You're getting thoughts and ideas and nudges and inspirations that are the Holy Spirit. You just haven't figured out they're actually the Holy Spirit. And when you begin to think about it consciously, you see somebody, you're praying for somebody, and you're thinking about the Holy Spirit can talk to me. When you see somebody, when you're teaching that class, and that kid, just, you just can't, they've just got your attention. And you're thinking, I, there's something going on today. The Holy Spirit wants to do something with that kid. Right? You're, you're working in the shop and you see that person on the forklift and you're like, huh. they, there's a reason they captivated your attention. Right? You, you had eight shot grocery aisles 
and you're like, I gotta go, I gotta go down this one today, and it's got three extra people in it, and I hate waiting behind three extra people, but for some reason, I feel like I should be in that grocery line today. Well, geez, maybe God wants you to say something nice to the grocery checkout person, right? Could we begin to say this week, I just want to be a little, just gonna try to be sensitive. When I'm pumping gas, maybe the person next to me at the tank, like across the thing, might be a divine appointment. So I want to ask you to bow your heads with me this morning, and uh, right before we worship, I want to ask you, I know you're at church, and I'm going to guess that probably all or most of you have a relationship with Jesus, but I'm going to also guess that maybe some of you don't, maybe somebody online doesn't, maybe somebody in the cafe doesn't, maybe somebody watching a recording of this doesn't. The great news is you're here, you're listening, you're watching. That tells me you're curious, you're interested, or you got drug here. And by any of those, I think the Holy Spirit uh, has a great plan for you to know Jesus as Savior. And um, normally, like in other times, we might even have you raise your hands or come to the front. I think those are good things to do right now because we're kind of in different rooms and online and all over the place. I want to give you just this invitation. Would you pray with me? Would you pray out loud with me? If you're a Christian already, would you pray out loud and just confirm that your commitment to Jesus? But if today you want to make that choice to follow Jesus, to know him, to start a walk with him, I want to encourage you to pray with me. Let's, let's go. Say, thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life as a sacrifice for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness. Today, I make the choice to follow you, to change. I declare and I decide that you are Lord, Savior, and King of my life. Today, I surrender. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. God is so good, isn't he? Wow. I want to challenge you, church. Uh, we're gonna we, we do this on purpose at the end, not to not to just fill a, an extra five minutes. <laughs> and I hope as we continue this fall, one of the things that's on my heart is even more emphasis on altar times and end of service reflections. But I want to just maybe you're like, oh, this isn't really for me. Just if nothing else, just spend some time in God's presence. Spend some time in worship, but allow what you've heard, what you've been challenged with, allow the Holy Spirit some space before we take off today just to minister. Maybe you need to repent and say, man, I've just given place to fear. <laughs> maybe, you need, maybe you've been selfish or angry or frustrated, nervous. I think it would be great today just to say, Lord, help me this week, this week, at least one opportunity just to encourage, strengthen, and comfort somebody with a word from you. That you would give me a word in season to sustain someone who's weary. That's all. Amen. If you're able, would you stand? You don't have to, but if you're able, I invite you to stand and let's just, just spend some time in the Lord's presence. Thank you, Jesus.
deserve it all, and we give you the highest praise. You deserve it all, you deserve it all, and we give you the highest praise. You deserve it all, you deserve it all, and we give you the last days, God said, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Sons and daughters will prophesy. So if you're, if we're all, all sons and daughters, but I think he's talking about younger people. So you're included here. Young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams, even on my servants, men and women. I'll pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. Remember at the beginning of service, I asked how many of you had ever in your lifetime had somebody give you a, I mean, you may not equate it to a word from God or not, but, but somebody gave you a word or a word of encouragement that really helped you. And I think pretty much everybody raised their hand. That's the power of that prophetic word. So what I want to challenge you with, we all need it, want it, and celebrate it, but would you be willing to give it? right? It's done so much for you. It's done a lot for me, right? Those words in my life at different periods have been profound. Would you be willing in your high school, in your workplace, in your home, to your kids, to your spouse, to your family, to your relatives, try your hardest not to be weird. <laughs> Just be loving. You also don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to pretend it's not God right? You don't have to pretend it's not God. You just don't have to be all hokey about it. I think people respect when you're just matter of fact. Hey, I'm a Christian. I think God's put this on my heart for you. Boom. People respect that. They'll take it or leave it. I might say, I'm ready. Sign me up. I might say, Pastor, you're making me nervous. I'm making me sweat right here in church. Too bad. <laughs> Lord, I just uh, thank you. Lord, you, you told Joshua, be bold and courageous. You were giving him a promised land. Courage meant he had to go not without fear. You don't need courage if you're not a little nervous. Courage meant go anyway, even when you're a little nervous. So I just speak over this body today, online, in the room, all over the property. Boldness and courage to move into your promises. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have an amazing week.
I'll be up here. Our altar team will be up here. If we can pray for you in any way, uh, we would love to spend a minute with you up here at the front praying over you. God bless. Have a great week.